Praise the Lord to God. I want you, I want you to look how beautiful she is. You never know, never known that she went through such a thing. Isn't it marvelous? Precious blessing of the Lord. She said. Jesus said to her, there's not anything, not anything at all worth being carnal over. And when she told me this, earlier in the week, the Holy Spirit touched my heart. And I said, Jesus, that's for me. He said, you can have as much rest, the same rest that's in heaven, on earth and I knew that uh, I needed prayer so when I got ready to go to sleep I called Pastor Steve I said Pastor I told him the story best I could in capsule form what she shared with us and I said uh, I want you to pray for me that God would help me beginning right away not to be carnal about any situation whatsoever. No, no, he, Jesus said there was no reason at all to be that way. So I want to have prayer. Won't you have prayer for me? Well, Stephen said, well, Oliver, you'd, you'd have to have vision. You'd have to have various vision of heaven to appropriate the faith for that. And I said, well, I don't have the vision, but I have the revelation because God touched my heart that there wasn't any reason. That's good enough. God says it. That's good enough for me. So I want you to pray for me. So he prayed, God's servant, prayed that in the night that the Lord would come as he did with Adam as he took the rib while Adam was asleep, take out of my heart what would make me carnal. You know, God touches my heart while I'm telling him. Holy Spirit operates with me. So that... The next time I'm in a hard place, hard places that you don't know anything about, hard places that are so severe, they're just severe, that I wouldn't respond carnal or think carnal in my heart. Wouldn't, that God would just help me not to be carnal anymore. God helped him to pray. And I said, now, Stephen, regardless of how I feel in the morning, I'm going to wake up believing because I've always believed what Jesus has said. And if he's going to touch my heart while very sharing this, then he's going to do something for me. And I'm going to believe. I woke up the next morning, I felt just like Oliver. That's not so good sometimes. Making difference. I didn't go by that. Because I felt like Oliver, I went by what Jesus said. I went by the prayer, by the word of God. And so, I've not hit that test. But I'm, and I'm not asking for it. I'm praying, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. So that I won't be carnal. You know, I saw the difference. I, something happened to me in Putnam Village. I saw the difference. Ordinarily, I'd have made a decision one way. I made it the other. I saw God had worked with me. It touches you, doesn't it? I just now realized it. I just realized he gave me the evidence. Where ordinarily I'd have a thought this way. I had it wasn't that way. It was the thought. It was the right thought. See what I mean is, uh, I, I, went, I got into a situation where where repeatedly things have happened, 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 and it caused your mind to give up about trying to help people. I didn't. I said, Jesus, I believe you're going to help them. I'm going to pray for you to help them. It's different. I just realized it right now. You see, when you and I deal with each other, we deal with each other on an earthly basis. We have a tendency to give up on each other. We have to, but God's not like that. And if we're really like God, I was looking at Vera. I'm not looking at Vera because though as if she were good to know, I'm looking at Vera because she is good to know. You're
Irish Lahim descending the city from the sky Abraham's dream and the answer to I cry to all who love Messiah. Stancy, look how wonderful she looks. Look how beautiful she looks. You can't tell she's been through anything like that. But see, I was loving her because of what God's done in my heart. And this is not difficult through the years. But, but I realize that it's not as if she were good to know. It's because she's good to know. And God looks at us not as if we were good to know. He looks at us because we're good to know. We have a tendency to give up on each other. And so we form opinions that makes us spout off in hard places. Pastors get in on more problems than anybody else. So after a number of years, if they deal with a certain number of people, you have a tendency to, you have, a tendency to have a set reaction. But I was asking God to deliver me from that. So that I wouldn't have any set reaction. I've seen April go to Brother Ham or Martha time after time after time after time after time. Daddy, pray for me. Grandpa, pray for me. Time after time after time. Da Grandpa, Daddy, Grandpa, Daddy, Grandpa, Daddy, pray for me. 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 Every time you had thought it was the first time. Dear Jesus, would you get into Martha's body now? And here, would you, would you get into April? Would you help her, Jesus? What makes him my cat? Jesus. Delivered him. Cleansed him. See, we're just... And, and when somebody's been cleansed of Jesus, you're safe in their hands. You're loved. It's wonderful to be loved. It's, it's wonderful to be loved when you're not so lovable or so lovely. But be loved anyway. Because Jesus is faithful. See, you want to be loved. See, because God loves you. And you know God loves you. Unless you've been hurt or imbalanced some way. You know God loves you. So God wants us to love each other like that. Now he said that he can give us that kind of, this is in the peace in the rest, he gives us kind of attitude on earth. Same attitude that's in heaven. I sure did. I thought it was an old steam whistle. Why well, didn't sound like a diesel whistle? Right there when I was talking about that. That old, whoo, that old whistle was a blowing. Where'd that thing come from? It came through here the other night during the prayer meeting. After about an hour and a half. It came through here. It went, he just blew it over and over and over. And it just was... Have we got an old steam locomotive on the track? He's, been, yeah. he's coming back and forth. <laughs> Joe, I thought I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And here I was talking about this right in the glorious place. And that old whistle going, whoo! And he was preaching on a certain thing that touches my heart now, Vera. Yeah. And he was preaching down there, and God's got an old diesel on the track. And I've got the tape of that. And if you don't believe God was in a train whistle, he was in that one. Yes, sir. I wish you'd have heard that ship. Stephen. See, he's never been back to that place. And God was bringing a certain message through him to those wonderful people and because they weren't ever going to let him return. And God got that shifter down there on the track, and she just, that oh, we would my just heart. do a thing. And I've got it on a tape. I've got it. And the old out. whistle would blow. And that old whistle. Boy, well, God brother, was in we heard a whistle. steamer out Yeah, it was just such a lonely cry in that old whistle. Amen. Yes, sir. And I thought, oh, how wonderful for God to send that old steam whistle by here while he was talking on that. It was just wonderful. I had to keep my poise. I said, Jesus, that sounded like a steamer. That sounded like one of those old whistles. You know, and it left, and then it did it again. Woo! I thought, well, Jesus, right there, right there, when I was telling you how important it is for you, to, for you to love each other. Now, you can be conscious of failures and still love each other. Better still, love each other more. 
I tell you, friends, it, see, the thing that hurts me the most is when y'all don't love each other. It just tears me to pieces. And see, I need a, I've asked for a work of God in my heart so that it, it's a great testing places. God would help me to think differently. And I found in Putnam Village, I was thinking differently. Oh, it tears me to pieces. I can't understand it. I can't understand for snotty things to be said. I don't care how mean people are. Because I know there's different backgrounds, different things, and there's a different work of God. And I know, I know that once you say something about another person, you put a barrier between you and that other person. When that th that's what Roger and I were talking about that the other day. See, we know that, that I'm not perfect. He knows it and I know it. But we know that if, if someone criticizes what I'm, what I'm trying to do my best, if they put that in the air, then they've got, they've got troubles for themselves. We know that unless they get that cleansed real quick, they'll be gone after a while. Because they really get aggravated at me then. Once you put it in the air, you can't hardly stand it. You just get, oh, you just get more aggravated. You just, you just, you're just more aggravated. And every time the preacher takes a turn, you're just more aggravated with him. Because you put that criticism in the air. And, you, and it's there. And demons attach themselves to that kind of thing. Makes you ugly. Makes you terrible. So I, I don't like cynicism. I don't like cattiness. I hate it. I don't want you to be catty toward each other. You know, I, 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 snotty remarks. I don't like that. It hurts me. And sometimes I don't say anything to you about it. Because if I did, you'd think I didn't love you. And yet, sometimes I do say something. Brother, can I say yes, certainly. Here's this microphone right here. Now the Lord's operating with it while I'm saying this. And God, God's had a steam whistle blow for us. This is so important what you're saying. You know, by God's grace... When I stood there looking into the kingdom, yeah, I didn't have anything hidden. No. I didn't have to worry. I didn't, but I'll do it tomorrow if only by God's grace. Right. But dear ones, if we've talked about someone, if we've been doing these things you've been talking about, could we stand there? Would we be able to gaze? No. I was so thankful there wasn't any hidden yeah. things there in my heart, Oliver. And it's only by God's right. grace. I mean, I'm no... You know, know I, by tomorrow, I, or I five that. minutes from yeah. now. But I'm great. thankful when I stood there. I'm thankful there. I hadn't clear. talked about anybody. It's all clear. I hadn't criticized Jesus, I anyone. Thee, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful. Hallelujah. Oh, if we could hear this. Yeah. Oliver, I'm stirred up. Oh, yeah. I tell you, we're, That's you know. That's what I saw when you were telling me. We this. don't know. When our, we don't know when we're going to be facing. No. We don't know when we're going to be standing at the no. river of death. No. no. I didn't really expect to be. No. We don't know. My sister dropped dead as she was entering a doctor's house for a Christmas party. Yeah. They were on their way to have a good time. She dropped dead. She didn't have a chance. She was a Christian. Yeah. But dear ones, we better not. We, you know, we've been taught a lot. Oh, yes. You know, a lot more than a lot of nominal Christians. Oh, yes, we've been taught a lot. Oh, Jesus has privileged us to hear the truth, I'm to so hear the thankful. gospel. You, Jesus has preached through you, yeah. and we're accountable oh, for Lord, those things. Us, pray. Oh, I want yeah. us all to be clear when yes. we stand and oh, look I'm into so heaven. Thankful. Yes, indeed. You know, that we can take yeah. those steps through the river of death right. and not have to hang our head and say, Oh, dear Jesus, oh, real quick, like, before I go, there's something there oh, Lord, that has to be taken. There won't be time. Clear me up right now. Well, praise the Lord. Oh, that's good there. See, I saw all this when you told me this, and God touched my heart. I said, Jesus, I need a work of the Holy Spirit that will help me in the very most extreme places to be like Thee and to love Thee and not form an opinion. See, God's helped me in the last two years change some. But I needed more changing. And I could see that... See, one of the things we pastors need, we need a certain attitude toward those who keep oversleeping every Sunday. We need an attitude over those who are who are not faithful. And did you know something? <laughs> I used to watch the movies, you know, uh, the old movies, the good old movies. And, and and you know, Gene Kelly or Bing Crosby would play a Catholic priest, and some of you know, it'd be a real nice part. They, they played the part of a good priest. And you know what I'd see? I'd see some of these Catholic people, they'd be unfaithful. They wouldn't come to church for years. 
But you'd never know by the priest that they didn't come to church for years, except sometimes they'd have a heart-to-heart talk. But but he would always, Bing or Kelly, Gene would always treat them like they were bears, parishioners. Now you know, you know, John, it'd just be good if you'd be in church. You need to get to confession. But they'd say it in such love and look like they ought to just took her finger in her face and said, Now look. They weren't like that. They were kind. They really did need to confess. But the, but the image was one of such love and tenderness. I prayed in the last two years. Now, Jesus, I'd like to be like those Catholic priests to love my people whether they're faithful or not and not form any set attitudes or reactions over their disobedience. And I'd like to be loved like that also. Hey, God, can't. isn't that great? Isn't that great? Hmm. God really wants to help us, doesn't he? Say, I really want you to love each other. I really do. I really do. I want you to love each other. He said, a new commandment I've given to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. See, I know, see, because I'm pastor, I know things because of counseling and because of the inner workings. I know things about lives. I know things of where personalities are near split and they don't know what they're doing sometime over here. And they, I know all of that. I know all that. I know some of it's not right. I know a great deal of it's not right because we do this and we do that. But you see, I have to, I have to keep love coming around here and God wants us all. What could happen in redeeming love? We'd all be careful of one another and we'd have this peace and not get upset. <laughs> Say this now. I always find that when we do that, we've got worse problem than the one we're upset over. I can always tell it. God to witness, I'll tell you this. I said, Stephen, when they act like that, they've got bigger problems than the one they're upset over. I can tell it. Now, I have to be careful right then not to be upset over the one who's being upset. If I do, I'm no good for them. Because the truth of the matter is, they're in a certain place. They're on a certain place walking with God. And this has happened a number of times in a decade, in more than a decade. And I just hope for better days. For work of God. Not that we don't have to be concerned. Not that there's, oh, we need help from God. But a certain way we handle problems. And a certain way we look at each other. That's so vital and so important. Yes, brother. Confession is good for the soul sometimes. True. Brother John brought the we'll never know Friday how he ministered to the needs of my heart. Psalm 23 begins, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And yet because of the past few weeks and months and some of the experiences that my wife and I have been privileged by the precious Father to go through, I found myself in a great gulf of aloneness. Yes. And I found myself wanting. I wanted a friend. Which that in itself is not so wrong. Last Sunday morning, when you shared with us about Richard Warnbrand, and I got the book and took it home and began <laughs> to read and I read of dear Patrick and his looking into Richard Warnbrand's face and asking him what was this Jesus like and Richard so earnestly wanting to be able to convey that back to him said well well, son, 
I guess Jesus is just like me. Yes. And I began to see the vileness of my own heart because I couldn't say that to somebody else. This terrible desire for a friend had so began to engulf me that Satan began to use my imagination to even imagine that there were those here that uh, were not my friends. Mm -hmm. And some of the ones who loved me the dearest I began to strike out at. And as John listened to me talk last Friday, Holy Spirit enabled him to, to help me see that the rebellion was not really for the aloneness. And the rebellion that I had allowed to grip my heart and take me into a backslidden condition. Yes, from September the 28th to the depths of a backslidden condition, and I have to be honest with that. There were times when there were up and down periods, but sure. the, uh, the fire that God had lit in my heart in May was gone. And the awareness I had of walking with him on the water was finished. And it was just, the waves were just bouncing yes. me up and down. Yes. And uh, Brother Tim Taylor on the telephone began to pray that night with me. And, and he said, Dear Jesus, he said, uh, this man's been walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And I suddenly began, the Spirit spoke to me through that, just that phrase. And then I began to realize that just after that valley is the rod and the staff. <laughs> it's true. And then I began to realize that he's promised that after the valley to spread a table for us yes. in the presence right of our enemies. There. Right there. And to anoint our heads with oil. I find it interesting that Patrick's face was damaged because it was Christ's face that I began to think about. And I realized that I had been striking him in the face like this and saying, Jesus, you're not enough. I have to have a friend. And that's what I was really saying. I have to have a friend. And then I grasped the fact that he's all I need. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what it says. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you're here with us tonight, you and your precious wife. By God's grace. His sister is um, Donna with us tonight. Was Donna able to be with us? Donna, no. All right. I'd like to pray for her healing before our Texas guests come and sing for us, and that'll be the closing part of the program. But you know, I just feel that God would touch Donna tonight, and I had a real prayer of compassion on my heart for her because she has to go in the hospital tomorrow. And you know, is Lori here with us, Lori Berkowitz? I thought maybe, Lori, maybe you could stand and pray, pray a prayer for her healing because you know God touched her daddy. Her daddy, when your daddy prayed, I thought you could just pray for Donna. That God would take out, you know, anything. She has to go tomorrow. I'll be operated on. But the Lord would just intervene, guide, care, heal, and just take care. I said, Donna, even if you don't come, we're going to pray for you. That you'd be healed. So would you just stand and say this prayer for this very precious lady. Let's pray. Jesus, 
We come to you now in faith. Yes. And ask you to heal Donna tonight. Go to her where she is, Jesus. Jesus, we know that you will heal her if it's your will. We thank you for the healing that took place in Carol's body. Yes. And it was because of the faith Jesus. of your servants Father. and the faith of these people here. Jesus. We just come to you again. We claim her healing. Amen. We just claim your help. Amen. Well, Lord, we've been looking for her perfect help. We just praise you for Jesus. what you've done in her life and in Carol's life. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Your love. You're wonderful to love. We know Jesus. that you're not going to walk away from them now. That's right. Just give them a peace. Yes, Jesus. Whether you heal her here or or later. Yes. Just give them a peace. Amen. Just thank you for your blood and for this church. Thank you, Father. Help us to be faithful. Amen. 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 Before they come to sing, please don't respond to this unless God's really working with you. But I thought there might be a number of you who would like to stand wherever you are over the audience that God has spoken to like he did me about not being carnal over anything. That's a real work of God. And if the Holy Spirit has spoken to you, given you the revelation, then he... He plans to follow that with the power. If you will open up and walk with him. When she died, when she was dying, when she was right there near death, she was dying like a Christian. Boy, God really witnessed on it a while ago. Because a Christian cares right on the edge of death about what goes on back here. She cared about those people. Stephen Terman said she's dying like a Christian. She's denying herself. She could take two steps and be in glory. She was denying herself. Uh, this is so important right there. Boy, God said she's dying like a Christian. She's denying herself. She's right on the edge. Yet she was practicing self-denial before she ever entered into the glory land. I thought that was so wonderful. God said she's dying like a Christian. That's so good. Helped us, didn't it? We were sitting up there. <laughs> Touched my heart and your heart at the same time. She was dying like a Christian. She was practicing self-denial. That's why she didn't step over into glory. It looked like it was optional at that point. She could have gone on. But she chose to... Be concerned about those trying to save her back there so she can come back and be with us. Praise the Lord. If God spoke to you and you'd like to stand for this prayer, I'd I'd like for Pastor Steve to come and pray for each one of you that would like to claim uh, this uh, prayer. I thought he might have spoken to a number of you. We can just stand where we are, the Holy Spirit. Now remember, folks, your pastor had this prayer prayed for him at almost midnight the other night after she witnessed and God touched me God talked to me he talked to me he said son you need this work that I told Vera about to our view. you need this I said oh master you mean at that hardest 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 place I'm not to no no you're not to respond like you have been It's going to be different now. Well, there's no way. There's no way as human as I am. But you know something? I didn't go by no way. I went by what he said. Jesus, if you're going to touch my heart, then I'm going to call Stephen and have him pray for me because I have confidence in him like I do his brother. That when he prays like I do my brother, then when he prays, it touches the throne of God. Now, if you'll go by that, if you'll believe the word of God, if you'll go by that, don't go by the other, then when the opportunity comes to myself, he'll give you the victory you've never had before. I mean in the hardest place, places that me and you and the rest of us, we don't know anything about it much. No, we're not, with, we're not with each other in those places much. 
Those are hard places. Hard, hard, hard. He said, I'll help you right there. So, Stephen, I want you to come and pray for us. Now, I want you to look. See, I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this. You talk about a work of God. Janet White wrote me the most wonderful note about my sermon this morning. Billy, there's another one I hadn't opened. I hadn't got to it yet. But God, she wrote me the most wonderful thing. She said, no one of the powers of hell fought. The way, you, well, the message you had on your heart. And here, God gives us a sweet time tonight. It'd be so bad. But see, Stephen, these are God's people. These, these are honest people. Now, see, I said don't get up unless God dealt with you because that meant that you weren't supposed to. It's not, your timing's not there. But these God dealt with. So, see, it touches it. God witnesses. These God. See, it just dawned on me that God might have dealt with a number of them like he did me. And that you, look here, look at the ministers. Look here, Stephen. Look here, Stephen. Wouldn't your brother be happy? So, uh, would you come and pray like you did for me? And I'm going to get right back in on the prayer that it can continue. Because Brother Hem says, moment by moment. And, and so far, I've made it. Jesus has helped me. Isn't that good? Yeah, Jesus helped me. I felt sweetness where it wasn't before. Where, where things hit me a thousand times in the face. And I, I wouldn't feel so sweet. But I felt sweetness this time. Isn't that good? I'm so thankful. God, it helped me. That makes life easier on others, does it? It really does, Stephen. Okay. It helps people. They can tell it. People that really need your help, yes. they can tell it. Because yes. they, they need help. Yes. And so here they are. They want to have a work of God in their heart. They're going to go by what God says. Go by what God says now. Go by Him. Not by what you think. Not by, not by how many times you fail. Because yes. I probably fail more times than you have. And that's thousands and thousands and thousands of times. I just to say, well, Jesus, I'm a sinner saved by grace. So you don't go by that. You go by his word, what he says. And so I want you to pray the prayer. There's going to be a big difference between now and next Sunday, between now and tomorrow, because God will do work for these right here. It's all ours right now. Because she came and shared with us. This precious handmaid of God came and shared. She's getting back in on the prayer, too, like me. So I said, I'm getting back in it. God says, you get back in it. So I'm getting back in with you and all of you that God's prayed for. Would you pray for us? What happens is that we forget. We can forget. Yeah, we forget. See, and if that, Stephen, that would, that would be so disappointing to me. I'd have to have God's help to pick up and go on, right? Yes. Lord helped you this morning. I thought he helped you too. Boy, I look at your face. Your face was up. Yeah. Lord, you were up. Praise the Lord. You didn't go down. Thank I was you. thankful. Praise the Lord. Would you pray for us? Pray. All of us. Jesus. The rest pray for us. The rest that are seated pray for us. Lord Jesus, we are reminded of, of uh, your word when you said it is not by might nor by power, but yes. by, by my spirit, right. saith the Lord. Right. See it right there. That's and you right. said through Malachi that I am the Lord, I change not. Yeah. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We also remember the words of Paul when he said, It is not to him who runs or wills, but to God who showeth mercy. Amen. And so, Jesus, we know that we are dependent upon thee for the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we are dependent upon thee to make us what we ought to be. Mm -hmm. And we know that we are shaped and formed as we respond to thy voice yes. in self-denial and obedience and yes. trust. I marvel at that. Yes. I marvel, O oh God, that we would be made to depend upon Thee yes. to be what we ought to be. Right. And that we can't take any credit. We can't say, well, look what I did. Mm -mm. Look what I've mm -mm. done. No. But all the while we must confess that Jesus is Lord and that any good thing which comes out of our lives comes from Him because we're nothing. And we're absolutely dependent upon Him moment by moment, yes. second by second That's for every true. breath and That's every true. step, every heartbeat. Amen. And Jesus, we are certainly dependent upon Thee to sanctify us oh, Lord. and to cleanse us of this awful yes. sin nature, oh, God. this self-life, oh, this carnality. Please, Jesus. And Lord, we want to thank You and praise You that You would be so gracious to our sister Bera yes. to give her such a marvelous experience. It's tremendous. For I know, Jesus, that not everyone walks that way. Not everyone has this experience with Jesus. 
And even though there was uh, quite a dark area and of suffering and pain, yet, dear Lord, what you told her was worth more yes. than all the suffering yes. and all the pain she went it through. It was tremendous. Because to have this vision yes. is the most important thing in the world. Yes. There isn't anything any greater or any higher than to see Jesus, to see oneself, mm -hmm. to know that we're needy mm -hmm. and we need God every moment mm -hmm. and He wants to give us the victory Amen. every second of the day. Yes, Jesus. That's right. But Jesus, you will give us, uh, as you operate with us, as we Amen. respond, then Amen. you will give us yes, the Lord. Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. And Jesus, we're claiming this victory, and it operates Amen. in my heart. Amen. I'm claiming. Praise the Lord. We're claiming this work we're of God by Jesus. faith in the name of Jesus. For every person Hallelujah. who's standing on their feet tonight, Amen. and who's declaring yes, to Jesus. God and to themselves yes, and to Jesus. the devil that Amen. by the grace of God, by the grace I'm of God. trusting Jesus I'm to trusting sanctify Jesus. me to sanctify and help me. Me to be Help filled me. with the Spirit filled and the not Spirit. be carnal over, not anything, be carnal over anything, but to have Jesus in my heart to have Jesus and to react like He would have me react. react. Like Jesus, we claim this react. by faith. We claim, we claim deliverance and victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray, O oh God, that you would help us Amen. at the next opportunity oh to deny ourselves and yes, believe Lord. the promise. Yes. For Lord, I believe you promised glory to do a work in our hallelujah. hearts tonight. And I praise you for hallelujah. it. We give God the glory Amen. and the hallelujahs. Amen. We're thankful, Jesus, that you would time oh, the yes. service. Oh, God. That you would be so gracious to work another Sabbath day. Oh, that God tough. would be faithful. Yes. Jesus, that you would answer our prayers. Yes. Oh, blessed God, as yes. we prayed this last week. Oh, in this sanctuary, as we've cried out to the Lord in prayer, yes, I want to thank you, Jesus, that our prayers have not been lost at sea, right. even though the enemy would tell us at times that your prayers are no, doing no good there Jesus. to no avail. Thank but you. Jesus, we thank you that you have answered prayer today, Amen. Amen. and that you have answered Amen. prayer by causing these dear ones to stand yes. on their feet Touch and say, I want to be like Jesus. Amen. I want to be sanctified. Yes, I don't want to be like this world. Oh, I don't want to be carnal. Yes, and mean and ugly. But I want to be like Jesus of Nazareth. Lord, we thank you because we know that God works only in answer to prayer. Jesus. And Jesus, we praise you for it tonight. Amen. You've worked with the saints and you've worked with other people Amen. here Touch in God. the Holy Spirit in calling and wooing and drawing yes, yes, and yes, bringing yes. conviction yes, for yes, sin. Yes, 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 we yes. want to thank you for it. Amen. I want to thank you, Jesus, that everything is important with you. Yes, sir. Nothing goes by. That's Nothing right. passes by you. Mm. You see everything. Yes. I want to thank you, Jesus, that you brought the old train whistle Amen. down the track <laughs> while Oliver was talking talking about this wonderful thing while yes, ago. Glory. And you had that conductor standing there yeah. and just at the right moment he'd pull the string yes, to give us this beautiful sound Amen. from those tracks over yonder. <laughs> oh Jesus, we thank you for it. That track's over a mile away over there. It sounded like he was at the doorstep. That's right. I said he's coming Jesus, through. we want to thank Jesus. you for it. I want Hallelujah. to thank you, oh God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you for helping us today. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that you helped Oliver make it through this morning. Oh, yeah. I want to praise you for Glory. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Glory. God, that you gave us such a wonderful message oh, for us. Jesus. On the kingdom of God, mm. thy kingdom come. Praise oh, Jesus, you helped him make it through. Amen. You gave him wonderful illustrations. Amen. Right as he was preaching, you gave him yes. that one right over there. Yes, yes, right yonder. That's right. Jesus, you helped him with it. Yeah, you gave right. him his points. Oh, you helped God. him make it through oh, there. God. Jesus, we want to thank you for it. Because, God, if you didn't help us, we'd just fail all the yes, time. Sir. We couldn't make it if you didn't help us. That's true. Jesus, we want to thank you and let you know that Amen. today we're thankful for the faithfulness of oh, God. God. Oh, God. trust in Touches God. Me. Oh, trust Lord. in the faithful Amen. God. Amen. Faithful to His promise. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I pray that you help us not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge right. Thee. Right. They will direct our paths. Right. Trust in the Lord with all Thine heart, yes, and lean not into Thine own understanding. Amen. In all Thy ways acknowledge Him. Amen. He shall direct Thy paths. Jesus, we praise You and thank You that You can help us, O oh Lord, not to lean to our own understanding when You give us a promise, yeah. when You tell us that That's we can it. truly be filled That's with the it. Spirit. Right. When you tell us through our sister Mary yes. that you can help us not be carnal over That's anything. Right. Oh, God, we know that you told her that. Yes, we know it's true. Yes, and you, we know, Jesus, you want to help us be this That's way. Right. God, help us to believe that, not give up. Glory help us, Lord, in our struggles not yeah. to give up faith, not to stop believing and trusting you, but to believe 
on through there. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. I pray God for healing in this place. Oh, that you'd heal bodies and deliver by the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. And that you help Oliver tonight. Thank you. As Jesus. he goes home, I pray Thank God you, that you give him multiple rest. Amen. Blessed Savior, give him double or triple rest. Glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, bring healing and fortification you, in these Jesus. days. Lord, and defeat the devil and deliver him Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, we know that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes, sir. But God shall deliver him out of them all. Amen. So, Lord, we claim victory tonight. We give you the praise we do, Jesus. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's yours. You may be seated. Tony, Bob, come on up. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Jesus. Oh, Janet. Janet had her, Janet and Debbie, Jimmy, Frank had their home just ransacked the other night. Hundreds of dollars taken. Diamond necklace taken. Um, other things taken right out of their home. Somebody broke in. See, they knew it was hunting season and they knew that, that they would be gone. And they got in and just dumped everything. Just, you know, just put it. Oh, but you know, you know what she did? She called Frank. She said, Frank, now you step in those woods. That's what you need. I thought that was wisdom. And she said, we we're going to get things. The police came in. Police said, I don't know how in the world. How come you're not so upset? How come you're not? Well, they're just glad they weren't there. Whoever that was, they didn't want to be there. You see, took Jimmy's a nice high five, clear out, he can go. That isn't right. That's terrible. That's the way our day. We're in that kind of day. But you know what? She said, I was just glad I could get down here on Sunday night to a place where I could forget about it all. Why, dear ones, Janet told me that. And we had a great time. Debbie came up and shook my hand. I finally uh, looked at Jim and said, I'd let him know if I saw that boy had his, or that person that had his t uh, set, his stereo set. He just grinned at me real big. Because that's, that's nice. See, I have a nice set now, too. You know, it helps me so much. I'm so glad for the music I can hear on it. You see, she's, she was thanking God. Oh, Janet, that helps me. Glory to God. And you realize the, the petition was this morning, thy kingdom come, and you realize what just happened in your hearts? You realize the immediate urgency of such a petition? And tonight, we had the opportunity to pray, thy kingdom come. That's what was happening while you were, thy kingdom come in my heart, O oh God. See, this is great. Praise the Lord. So we're thankful for Janet. So be, Janet's gotten up very few times through the year because she's a very timid person. It's when it comes to public meetings. She just not, boy, it takes God to get her up. She wants to thank God. Helped us. Praise the Lord. Yes, you did. And um, I feel like we really had a real high privilege by her speaking to us. It seems almost as if Jesus himself talked to us. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You know, the, the, while she was speaking, I kept thinking, yeah. she's telling us much more mm -hmm. than what she's telling she us. Was. I felt like Jesus himself was talking to us. I felt that way myself. And, and telling us things because you hear a lot about people that, um, not about a year ago, you hear a lot about, you heard a lot about people that left their bodies and this kind of a thing. Yeah, it's a, yeah you've heard yeah, a lot I've about all that. Over the place. But the message that she's came back with would be almost so much more than just the experience. Because, you know, I've never been real big on heaven. And I don't know why. I've just never had, I've never been real big on it. You know, I know a lot of people get real happy when you talk about heaven. I've just never been that impressed with it. I guess maybe I don't have a real revelation of it or something. I haven't had revelation, right. Yeah. But when she spoke about it, it was like... <laughs> It was like what she said, that there were not words for it. And although she did not explain it in words, I had a concept of it. You know, even though she'd not exp said much about it, because she said it wasn't for heaven, you know, earthly terms. But the way she spoke about it and the way she said the vitalness that we needed to get there, mm -hmm. that, you know, that really struck me because, you know, the vitalness in it. And it made me think of E. Stanley Jones, how he said he would gaze, glance at the world and gaze at Christ. Yeah made me think of that. Maybe that's what he was seeing. Maybe that's what he saw, uh -huh. you know, a glimpse inside of heaven's oh, door. Yes. Maybe that's what he was seeing when he was telling those people that. So I feel like we've had such a high privilege. We have. And I am, I am so thankful. And all while she was talking, I could see areas in my life that needed help. 
all during the time she was talking. And although I felt like she was making no pleas, I felt like that it wasn't wasn't really a sermon at, that you know usually they have a you know they're leading you to a point. She gave a witness. Right. You know I didn't feel like she was there was any push or you couldn't follow a pattern for you to make a commitment at the end or or to bring you to think a certain way. Oh. It was so discreetly put that I feel like the Holy Spirit really worked that and that's why I feel like so much that it came from Jesus yes. I felt like that you know Jesus was up there telling yes. us something he and was. that and, and I think that's why her countenance was so beautiful yeah. while she was speaking because I noticed that her hair glistened in yeah, her countenance I saw it. yeah her countenance like was just so heaven. yeah it, it looked as you know like I said you, you know, know like how Jesus you know how Stephen how Stephen responded to me when I called him and said now Oliver I don't know if I want to see her or not. You know how Stephen is. She's come fresh from glory. I'm not sure I want her to see me. He said when Mother Bowser came out of glory, she could see the darkness in people's lives. Yeah. That's what Stephen, you know what I said to him? I said, Stephen, when she talked to me, it was so sweet. I felt no reproof or condemnation at all. I felt the love of Jesus. I said, you know, that love draws you to want to be like Jesus. I said, I didn't feel that at all. You felt that same thing tonight. She saw the hair glisten and the Shekinah. See, right here. I called your attention to it while she was talking. Yeah, I wanted to, to say a small exhortation away because I think sometimes we get later, you know, like maybe we minimize it because it is a form of a miraculous thing. And I thought about John the Revelator because he saw this. He sure did. He, and he saw he saw it after he had gone through a suffering. And remember he had he, seen this. Remember what he closed this message with? Even so... Come, Jesus Lord, Lord Jesus, come. Yeah. That's what he said. Let the, thy kingdom come. After he'd seen all that. Right. And so I thought, although it's miraculous, and all, you know, you don't want to minimize it no, because you can rationalize it out. Yeah. You know, she was maybe hallucinating, or maybe she was, you know, under this medication that she would see something like this because she's got a religious background or something. You know, you, there's, you're tempted to minimize it that way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I said, John the Revelator saw it. And he, he was healthy when he saw it. And I am so thankful for it. I, I really am. Did. Praise the Lord. Aren't we glad to have him here today? They've sat here all day, so wonderful, and helped me so tremendously till I'm thankful to Jesus. Glad. Bob, I don't know how in the world is it vacation time or what is it? Vacation time. How did you get a Methodist preacher up here? And his wife. <laughs> Boy, we're glad to have him. And I, I'm so glad y'all got on that front seat tonight. That really helped us. You were helping me. All of you were helping me about as much as anybody in this place. The weight was so severe, probably one of the greatest weights I've ever had in my 12 years, going on 12 years. But your faces were lifting me up. You know what they said? They said they just wished it last till three instead of one. Have you thought that because of their long journey, God had, might have just kept us right into the 12 o'clock hour so that we were having fellowship with, with uh, Gail and Jack? See, that this would feed their souls also. Sometimes we don't know why it goes that long. So I'm so thankful. This man is a close friend of mine, by God's grace. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus did this. When Terry and Martha got married... I found him. He found me. And he responded to me by God's grace. I tell you, I was excited because they sung. Terry had you sing that night at the wedding. Well, I hadn't heard much music like that. And I had never been in a wedding where you did. And you know, Suzanne just had everything down pat so we could make it. And of course, Homer and I were so happy. Till it was hard to keep from shouting at a wedding. We really had to work. It was wonderful. But at the night of the rehearsal, you sung a little while there, just several minutes, and I preached. And you didn't, he didn't back up from me. I mean, I really preached straight. I tell you, I talked. But he, he, drew, he, was, he came toward me in spirit, not away, because of the honesty of his heart. And we became friends. And so I desired that they could come up. And you did. And I guess you've had two journeys up here. Two, three, three, four. <laughs> and it's been so wonderful. It's been so wonderful. And we've fallen in love with the gift, with him, and with this gift that God's given him. And uh, it's just been our encouragement. What a surprise I had when they said Texas was coming. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm so glad. And Suzanne, has it been precious today? That's so wonderful that all of you would say, well, we just wish it'd last till three instead of one. Because not everybody felt that way, but... Wasn't it wonderful that I didn't feel any press till just after one? I felt the, 
I felt it, and I was anxious to move on as quick as Jesus had let us. But see, they were here drinking it in. What do you got on your heart tonight? Some cherry and some songs. Okay, yes, sir. Maybe they could share again Wednesday night. By God's grace, this will just continue on Wednesday night. Will you be here Wednesday? We'll continue on. Praise the Lord. It's a long way from Texas to West Virginia by car. But I'm right at home. Feel right at home. Uh, I want to tell you all that, that you've still got it. I, I believe this is my fourth time here, and you've still got it. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. You've still got the same love that I felt the very first time I came here. And it may be just a little stronger than it was. Oh, Lord Jesus. And I hope you're thankful for it and hope you hold on to it. Lord, help us. By God's us. grace, I, I hope you'll always be that way. God, help us. We're fortunate to be here. We had some battles getting here. We kind of died out of this trip for a while. Didn't look like the Lord was going to let us come. We kind of had it planned and... Some things came up, and so we just said, well, it looks like we're not supposed to be here. So we just died out to it and forgot about it. Some things happened. It came up again, and things worked out, and Jesus gave us a beautiful ride through Arkansas and Tennessee and Kentucky. The trees were magnificent. I'd never seen it before. <laughs> this is the first time I've... I've driven by automobile during this time of the year when the oh, trees were changing. Wow. And it was one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. But I've never felt any more at home anywhere than I do right here. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you, you all that I love all of you very much. I sure love you. And uh, you've found a special place in my heart as well as in the hearts of some other people in Texas that we had to leave behind. A couple of little things I have to have to mention. Uh, the West family that have, have shared with you a couple of times in music send their love to you. Oh. And uh, they're trusting to come back sometime. Oh, yes. We just have to wait. And uh, another gentleman that has been here two or three times, yes. Don Schwartner, yes. a young man that, that came here uh, a year ago, a little over a year ago, I believe, for the first time. Um, Don sent his personal greeting and his love to you. Oh, Jesus. And uh, especially to uh, Rita Slater's first and second grade class. They called him Mr. Don. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Don has never forgotten you, and he's trusting to be back. He's just waiting for the Lord. And Mr. Don's a busy man now. He's driving a school bus, and he's going to college to get a teaching certificate. He feels the Lord drawing him into teaching, possibly. We're pretty excited about that. Yes. But uh, he specifically told me to tell you all he loved you and to send his greetings. And I told him I would oh, do it oh, personally. Oh, good. Wow. And uh, I don't like to take too much time, but this is one of those things I felt like we the Lord it. wanted it to be said to you. And that there are people down in Texas that really love you and that miss you. Oh. And that love to be here. And by God's grace, they will be back. <laughs> of course, one of the greatest thrills for Susanna and I is to have our pastor and his wife and their two children to come with us. So sweet. And uh, that's just about the greatest thing that could happen. If they wouldn't have come, we probably wouldn't have been here either. So we needed one another to get here. Oh, yes. I want to sing uh, a couple of old songs, kind of put them together that you've probably heard before, and then I want to ask... Uh, Pastor Tony and his wife to come up if we could maybe share just a little sure. more in music. I thought maybe if he could, maybe he could preach for us Wednesday night. I know vacations are vacations, but maybe he could share in a way that it wouldn't bring pressure on him. Maybe we could love him in such a way that it wouldn't be pressure, that he could just share out of his heart. Not have to worry about, you know, great, great big sermon or anything, but just out of his heart. So if Tony could speak to us Wednesday night, I believe it would help us. It's, I believe it will, by God's grace. I won't even tell you the name of these songs. I'll just let you figure them oh, out. Right. They're not that hard. <laughs> this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up 
somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. Like traveling on, yes, it feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, feel like traveling on. Let others seek a home below, I feel like traveling on. That flames devour and waves or flow, I feel like traveling on. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. I Savior, pardon me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. And I feel like traveling on, yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Oh, I feel like traveling on My heavenly home is bright and fair And I feel like traveling on Hey, hey. Glory to God <laughs> Tony, if you and Carol come up here While they're coming, I... I had a little revelation this, this afternoon. I don't get that very often. It comes, the Lord doesn't give me things like this very much. So precious. But it happened this afternoon or this evening as I was getting dressed and I was drying my hair, sitting there in a the chair with a hair dryer, you know. Uh, and I had often thought, I said, you know, Jesus, why can't I write songs like my pastor? And Jesus, why can't... I play a lot of different musical instruments, or why can't I make these real complicated chords like the West family that I know so well? Uh, why can't I sing all these real pretty harmonies, Jesus, and why don't I have the vibrato in my voice? All of these things that I have a tendency to question sometimes. And it seemed like the Lord in his own way spoke to me and he said, you know, I've given you all of these things through the love and friendship of people that have these talents and gifts. And he said, what more, you know, could you want? Because you don't even have to work. All you have to do is just <laughs> sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> and that was a great thing for me. So I, I just couldn't worry about that. Amen. Quit worrying about all those gifts that, that he's given to others. I'm just so thankful that he gave them to other people and that I have the love and friendship of those people. I couldn't ask for anything more. The interesting thing about the songs that Bob was allowed to sing was that they were chosen before we before we came uh, they were chosen this afternoon mm -hmm. not knowing what we were going to get to hear about heaven and uh, it sure sure helps yes I guess the only thing that is missing is that cricket that was here when we <laughs> cricket well, we had a cricket back here somewhere just carried on big while they sung. And uh, he died. <laughs> he died and we shut all of his cousins out. <laughs> well, I, I headed out from Texas with another cricket, Texas cricket, and it died. So I was going to present it to you. Oh, my God. But <laughs> you won't get the cricket. <laughs> you 
got to read the word. You got to pray. You got to witness and obey. You got to do it every day. That's the only way to do his will until he comes. Until he comes to take his children away. Da -da -da. There's thousands of promises in God's word that some of you Christians may have never heard. Your spiritual fire may be growing cold. You fail to read the word and so you starve your soul. You gotta read the word. You gotta pray. You gotta witness and obey. You gotta do it every day. That's the only way to do His will until He comes, until He comes to take His children away. Da -da -da. When troubles come upon you and times get hard, do you worry and fret or do you turn to the Lord? Well, there's a spiritual power for one who sees. When you feel you're gonna fall, fall upon your knees. You gotta read the word, you gotta pray, you gotta witness and obey. You gotta do it every day. That's the only way to do his will until he comes, until he comes to take his children away. Da -da -da. There's some folks will tell you that they know the king But they never ever share a single thing Well, there must be a limp in their Christian walk If there's nothing but the past in their religious talk You gotta read the word You gotta pray You gotta witness And obey You gotta do it Every day that's the only way to do his will until he comes, until he comes to take his children away. Da -da -da. Well, there's going to be times when the sheep will stray. They hear the shepherd's voice, but they don't obey. Well, disobedience is sin. It'll surely kill. And you never will obey till God convert your will. You gotta read the word. You gotta pray. You gotta witness and obey. You gotta do it every day. That's the only way to do His will until He comes. Until He comes to take His children away. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shekinah, Shekinah, His glory fills this place. Shekinah, Shekinah, the presence of His grace. Shekinah. Shekinah, see it shine in his children's face. The glory of God reflects in his people. His light can shine on everyone. of his grace Shekinah, Shekinah see it shine in his children's face We must not hide our light in a bush 